<clears throat> what is going on YouTube and Yasquad? This is your boy Yakutis. This is your review for The Real Housewives of New Jersey Season 13, Episode 3. When I tell y'all I am tired of the Teresa, Joe, Melissa, Mary go round, I really am. I'm going to try to stick it out as much as I can. But anyway, we pick up where we left off. Um, we're at Danielle's mozzarella party. Teresa felt like Melissa wasn't rooting for her and Louie. And I'm really just getting tired of everything having to be about Teresa and the reciprocity doesn't exist, but whatever. Melissa says no one opened their arms more to Louie than Joe and I. And I want to see you. I want to see your happy ending. I'm fine with the engagement party, though she had to correct the lie. And she says, I'm okay with not being in the wedding. Teresa asked her, well, do you want to be any, in the wedding? Um, I, and then she says hey, to everybody, she should love, you know, she would love for her to be in it. And Melissa feels like it's charity. And I sort of kind of believe it too, but it's also saving face, which is like, oh, well, you can come because then if it ever comes back up, it could be like, well, I invited her. I invited her to be in it and she didn't want to be in it. That type of thing. But they pretty much for what it's worth, dead it, they hug, it's over. We get Dolores and Paul, Frank and Paul, they like to rip on each other. Um, Paul calls Frank Mr. Potato Head and during the reunion, uh, Frank had called Paul, um, Buzz Lightyear. So look, it's fair game at this point. This is what they're doing. Um, the photographer from the photo shoot arrives. Frank shows up shortly thereafter. And he's going to be doing like an Easter type of, um, you know, photo shoot. Frank isn't happy that he had to knock on the door to come in. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Pimpin'. Because he's used to things being a certain way. Frank wants to get the guys together for, you know, a guy night. And, you know, Paul is like, okay, well, I'll be there if I can. And then he looks at Dolores and Frank's like, why are you looking at her for approval? And, and Paul was like, well, she and I originally had something scheduled for that day. So I'm looking at her because it, it's not for approval. It's, hey, we got something, you know, what's going on? Like, is it okay if I, you know, break our day? And he says he'll let him know. But Paulie also said to Frank that he expected for Frank to like pull him to the side to have a combo. And Frank was just like, yeah, I hit uh, Dolores up for her, you know, to get us together. And his thing is, you don't send a woman to do a man's job. Now, look, real talk, when one of the quickest ways to get somebody riled up is to come for their male or female identity it's one of the quickest ways especially if someone isn't secure in that because when you question that automatically tensions flare we'll see that again later in this episode and but frank didn't give into it it was and i think what paulie may have been trying to say again i don't know because frank whole thing is i don't have your number so how can i but i'm guessing maybe him text the lord be like hey dolores here is my number give it to paulie and have Pauly hit me up. Maybe that's what Pauly wanted. I don't know because I ain't in a relationship. Um, let's see. We get Margaret, Jackie, and Melissa. For the record, there's going to be a whole lot of rehashing of what happened at the mozzarella party. Okay? Okay. Jackie is, you know, getting better with her eating habits and whatnot. Slowly but surely breaking down the bad habits. That is good. Love to see it. She's looking good. Look like she got some feelings and stuff going on here, but they ain't none of my business. And Jackie is asked, she asked about the party and, you know, they pretty much tell her what Danielle said and what she felt. And Jackie was like, well, you know, I was kind of looking her up and down because what she was wearing was atrocious. Seemed like she just pulled the shorts out of the laundry bin or something like that. And I'm sitting here like, OK, Jackie, you're being very mean, girl. And I heard I didn't read it, so I can't, you know, confirm. But I heard that Jackie has said that you know, she was doing a little bit extra because, you know, her job was on the line, hence why she's a friend of the show. So it seems like Jackie was trying to do a little bit extra to make herself interesting. And the reality is, I'm going to keep it a bug, I would prefer having um, Jackie on instead of Melissa because they could have demoted Melissa and just had J Joe, her husband, Joe Gorga, just do what Joe does because he is an integral part of this show, let's be honest. Melissa doesn't give anything. Again, I would say, you know, Jackie over Melissa. I'm just saying. But Melissa is good to look at. 
Um, and then they talk about the mozzarella party, all of that. And you know, all of them collectively feel that Jennifer Aiden is off. We'll see some of that kind of come to fruition next episode. And they even said there has to be something going on within the marriage. And we kind of see a little bit of that in this episode. So we get Rachel uh, Gianella, her daughter, and her husband, John, at a photo shoot. Uh, Gianella is two years old. Uh, Rachel asked about them having another uh, kid. And Joe is just like, uh, what? <laughs> um, can we wait a year? And, you know, Rachel tells us she didn't think that she would have, you know, that they would be here because just after marriage, she was pregnant and she had a miscarriage and they never um, had another child. But she's done IVF. Um, they have five embryos and John just wants to wait for a year. Now, again, I don't know how this all is. I'm wondering, did like did she have to do IVF and then they were able to planet and she had the child that way um or like did they have to go through a surrogate i don't know maybe i missed something so but her whole thing is there's five embryos there and she kind of wants a family of four so we'll see how that plays out we get Teresa, gia and louie gabriella comes in after but i'm just gonna throw her into to there you have Teresa journaling writing affirmations beautiful thing love to see it Teresa talks about the party and, you know, says Melissa brought up the engagement party. That was Marge. It wasn't Melissa. And saying, you know, um, that I lied. And Louis says, coming from the liar herself. Here's where I have a problem with Louis. Is it's a lot of talking that you're doing and you real, real fugazi. You real fake. Because what's going to happen is the reunion going to come and it's going to be an ish show. Literally. Because you're doing one thing in their faces and you're saying something else behind their backs. And coming from someone who dealt with a situation to where a sibling, you know, well, fiance turned wife, a whole lot of issues, sides were taken, all this other stuff. I know the feeling even to the point where said fiance turn wife had a lot of opinions about family stuff even felt comfortable being in family settings voicing said opinion and everybody letting it ride because of who her husband my sibling was i get it and this is one of those where i really just wish that if this is truly how he felt he just saved it for off the camera and not saying it on the camera because you are truly not helping and you real, and that is fake for him to reserve his true feelings but you don't have to sit here and egg Teresa on you don't have to do that nevertheless uh Teresa says they ended it okay even though she declined being in the wedding Gia is upset that she even asked her given that what Melissa said about her being there for the girls we get a small snippet from her podcast and my thing is I'm not going to go too deep into that because just that little snippet is not enough and I don't like Melissa that much to listen to the whole podcast. Sorry, not even gonna lie to you. Um, and she, Gia even says that the only time she saw her uncle was when the cameras were up. And Gabriella, now Gabriella is the quiet one. We don't really hear much from Gabriella. Now, my thing is, I'm more in tune to believe Gabriella on some of this stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you. And here's the thing. When the more reserved, not the quiet, when the more reserved person starts speaking up, that you need to listen to them. But she's upset at how Joe is, you know, I'm sorry, no, no, no. She is upset because she remembers who was there. And she even said, like, we would remember who were there at certain pivotal points in life. So we're going to see how that play out. And I feel we're going to hear a lot more from Gabriella come the rest of this season. And Louis says he's upset at how Joe is treating Teresa. Now, here's the thing. We went now. This truly was more about Melissa. You have Louis turning it from Melissa to Joe. And I'm looking at Louis like, you think you crafty, but see, I, I see you. And him saying that he doesn't like how he treats her, act like I don't see you. And 
I'm still just kind of like Joe really wasn't mentioned. It was more Melissa. The girls did allude to Joe more or less Gia, but the main focus was Melissa. You ain't slick. We get Danielle and Melissa in New York City. Danielle's meeting with her because she kind of has a little clothing line called Bougie Girl. But it's me with Melissa to see how she does business for Envy. This is the first time we'd heard about Envy and I don't know how long, but we ain't seen her in the store. Maybe she has an online version of Envy. I don't know. Um, Melissa talks about the lunch she had with Jackie and tells her where Jackie said. Obviously, that is that doesn't make Danielle happy. So we're going to see that come to head next week. And I'm going to just leave it right there. We're going to deal with it then. So that's it. They talk about the party. And Danielle says that, you know, she's the sister in her relationship who doesn't talk with her brother. Now, I'm going to say this. A lot of stuff is missing. Even when we see her parents in a subsequent episode, a lot is missing. And I'm going to say this to you, Danielle, if you ever hear this, baby, you have the opportunity to make this show your own. Now, we may not see your brother and his family, but you will be a fool if next season, if you hopefully you get next season, because I like your personality. You a little messy, but I like your personality. Get your, Don't do what Teresa did. If you know you got pro Now, here's the thing. She ain't bring up her problems with her brother. Danielle Staub did. But since you bringing up the problems with your brother, get your brother on this show with the wife. Okay, if you finna sit here and give us a little, a, a little more, so go ahead and give us the whole dang on thing. And both of y'all can get paid off y'all issues. I'm just saying. But she says um, her uh, during COVID, she was doing IG like product, you know, things and whatnot because she saw mother and daughter pairs making bank. And before... I wrote down what she said. I was looking just like, mm. it was one of those cringy, mm, no, baby, no. And then he made fun of her, you know, when it came, made fun of the videos. And if he did, I can kind of see it from, you know, a similar standpoint because he's the younger of the two. So, you know, just kind of busting the chops and whatnot. And I feel, and if he was trying to give her correction, if that's the case, boy, you text your sister. <laughs> like, don't. But again, you don't embarrass your. You don't embarrass your. Yeah, uh, -uh I ain't even doing that because then cause if I say that, then I'm gonna be, you know, kind of being a hypocrite. Whatever. He should have just sent her a message. <laughs> anyway, she says she blocked him because of that, and he called her about being blocked and told her that she was out of the wedding for blocking him. And Melissa says, "Okay, something is missing." I said the same thing, and then she then says, okay, well, during the wedding planning process, um, she was putting in her two cents, you know, with the soon-to-be sister-in-law, and, you know, she was just like, you know, at one point, she was told it wasn't about her, and Danielle says she's the kind of sister where if, you know, something is bad, she's going to tell you, so it seems like she might have been overstepping her boundaries, don't know. <clears throat> and she says, I will never have my family break up ever. She sent a text to her brother saying, I know who I'm dealing with. After that text message, he kicked all of them out of the wedding. That was two years ago. And now we have more, but there's still more. And I don't know if it's just, you know, when you have regular conversation and you just, you know, give enough. Or if it's she's holding on to certain pieces because... She doesn't want to make herself look bad because there are people who will tell a story in such a way that all I want is to garner sympathy, but I'm not going to tell you exactly what I did and what I said, because then it means I have to hold myself accountable for my behavior and I don't want to be not saying that's what Danielle is doing, but that is a reason that sometimes people can withhold information or she's doing the smart thing, playing the long game and it's going to stretch it out over episodes and give us bits by bits by bits. Because if she gives us everything in one episode and we don't hear nothing else about it, she fizzles. So I can kind of see it. <clears throat> and Melissa lets her know, okay, well, I'm going to play devil's advocate. You know, as a wife, you know, I'm in a similar situation. I've tried to tell my husband to, you know, try to reach out, make it work, and he doesn't want to. I can't make him do something he doesn't want to do. And one thing that we see with both Joe and Teresa, they both feel like the spouse is supposed to make their sibling do something they don't want to do. Because you just heard Melissa say that. And we've seen this with between her and Joe. Because Teresa told Melissa, you can make your husband do something. 
Remember that because it's going to be the reverse at the end of the episode. So we get Jennifer and Bill. Look, they talk about chores and, you know, she has to entice her children to do more by saying, I'm going to pay you and say, what's minimum wage? I'm going to do this. And one of the kids is like, okay, well, let's bump it up a dollar. And Bill is just like, mm, how about we bring it down? Because we even saw her first season on where she compensates for not being there and whatnot with the kids by giving them stuff. And Bill doesn't agree with that. And there, so she's trying to tell them, okay, well, how about we do this? And she never discussed it with Bill. So you're telling the kid something. And he is like, no, how about this? She's trying to teach him how to do chores this way. He said, well, a more effective way is like this. And I know a lot of people would say they like Bill should have followed her lead. But I'm going to say... If this is something that you want to talk with the kids about after the cameras, talk about it as a group, as a as a unity, at unity as a unit together. Y'all map out a plan and then y'all go to the kids with it because the fact that the kids see there's a divide here, they're they've already done it, but they're going to continue to pit mom against dad. Doesn't matter. Jen talks about the party and says, you know, she told Mars that she's the um, most reflective person in the group. Bill's face <laughs> disagrees, and, and Jen is just like, it's a yes or no question, and Bill pretty much plays, you know, the peacemaker slash Switzerland type person, and she wants him to just have her back, which I can see it, but, at, and I think more or less she, in general, she wants him to have her back, but I think she wants that in front of the cameras, but this is one of those where, and I do agree, there are moments where in front of the group, he doesn't have her back, and he should more. But when y'all get home, let your husband be honest with you. And if all you want is somebody to sit here and just, you know, uplift you in your BS, that's what you got your friends for, unfortunately, because they, your castmates, I'm sorry, not your friends. Anyway, we get Danielle, Big Phil, that's uh, her father, Angel, that's her mother, and her children's Valentina and uh, Dominic. So her daughter, Valentina, was robbed of an art show because of covid so she has one plan at home with her parents being there which i think is cute it's really it was, the whole thing was cute i loved it i'm like oh and you know i like to see stuff like this right so danielle lets us know she gets her personality from her father her parents were separated when she was eight and for most of her life they couldn't be in the same room they started being civil when she had her son because she pretty much told them if y'all want to be in his life y'all need to get it together and make it work I get the ultimatum work, so hey. So Danielle um, doesn't want Dominic and Valentina to end up like her and her brother. Again, it's just so much there that we just don't know. And, you know, they talk about her brother not being there. Angel, her mother, hasn't seen or spoken to him in a long while. Big Phil is the only one that has a relationship with him. And he begins to cry, and he recalls, you know, when... Um, her brother was born and how I guess she came in saying, you know, um, I have a baby brother and I say brother. I, I know how to say brother, but when I'm speaking about, you know, my YouTube fam, you know, I call, you know, like Scotty, Terrence, you know, Josiah, I call him my brothers. That's that's what I do. But th he's replaying that. And we see a little clip of, um, of some old footage they have. And he says this shall pass. So it's clear this is some real stuff. And even though the father didn't have tears falling, they was in his eye and he, he was doing his best like, y'all ain't finna see me cry. And it's affecting all of them. So this is some real stuff. And this is why I say, if Danielle can, bring your, your brother and his wife on here. Because with Jackie, Jackie had problems with her sister. And it, I felt robbed because she brings up this issue and her sister wanted no parts of it. So we got it from one part, one perspective, and it it started and ended in one season. So hopefully we can get this going. So we get um, Melissa enjoy the short house. Lisa, her sister, Donna, her mother, mother is there. Her mother's dating, good for her. Okay, go ahead and get your groove back. Melissa asks her mother and sister in front of the kids. I ain't like this. I ain't like this. They were having like a little salad lunch or whatnot, and I felt like. If Melissa knew she was going to do this, she could have just had the kids put them some salad in the bowl and stay in the house because they was out on the patio or backyard, whatever. And ask them if they were invited to Teresa's wedding. And the mother and sister say no. And Joe lets us know that Joe Judice's family was at his wedding when he got wedded. So, and we, and the, and I, 
the whole Italian thing is everybody got to be there. So I'm under the assumption that Joe, so Joe Judas and Teresa were already wedded. I have to assume. <coughs> so when Joe, ooh, <clears throat> so I went down the wrong pipe. When Joe and Melissa got wedded, obviously mother and father was there. And I guess the uh, Italian thing is to invite the parents of your in-laws. So that's why Joe Gorga feels way like, so I understand why me and my wife isn't there because Joe's whole thing is they've been nothing but good to our parents. And for that, they need to be there. But before he goes into that, Joe peeps like, wait a minute. And he pretty much, he excuses their children. And I'm kind of looking at Melissa like, you didn't think to do that? I appreciate Joe doing that. But he pretty much says, like, he's hurt because, you know, how close Melissa's mom and whatnot was to his parents and how they treated their parents. And for that, they should be invited. I'm like, mm, expectations. I don't really like putting expectations on people. I, I like to keep them low. But again, if this is a cultural thing, I'm going to just shut up on that. And Lisa says, you know, no, Lisa says, talk to Louie. Joe says he did after New York. He called him and he told Louie to tell his sister admit she's wrong. And it's like, you're telling a grown man to tell your sister to admit she's wrong. Because we've seen it work the opposite way. It don't work. You can't make somebody do something. Then you going to put the fiance in the middle. And Louie told him she's not going to do that. And I'm guessing just based off of what he knows of Teresa. And Joe doesn't want to talk to Louie, but he's going to be at Guys Night. So we got Guys Night. We have Evan, which is um, Jackie's husband. So good to know that he's still in the mix. Now, they don't have Tiki in the mix, which he was at one of the parties. But I'm guessing because we have all the Italians minus Bill, Jennifer Aiden's husband. Got it on the show. But it's good to know that Evan is still in the midst. So you got Evan, you got Joe Gorga, Joe Benigno, you got Frank, Bill, Nate, which is Danielle's husband, and John, which is Rachel's husband. John comes in, is like the very last one to come. So apparently he pretty much said that he could drink them under the table in a flashback. So he comes in bearing the gifts. He gives adult divers to Frank, uh, Pepto-Bismol to Joe B. I believe the Tums were for Joe Gorga, if I'm not mistaken. I believe. Um, so that's good. Uh, Joe B says, you know, Paul isn't coming and Frank is upset and lets him know about, you know, um, Lou, I'm not Lou. Um, Paul pretty much just saying, you know, it don't have to read, not Teresa De Dolores try to get us to talk because that's a man job. And, you know, of course they busting his balls about that. Frank misses his relationship with Dolores. Joe says to the table, Paul is a good looking guy, you know, and he's saying this to get up under <laughs> Frank's skin. Like, hey, you know, he's got a, you know, he's da, 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 da. And then Frank says, well, look at me. And then everybody busts up laughing. You know, just a good time. You know, And this is what we expect from the guys. Just a good time had by y'all, right? Uh, John asks, is Lou, has uh, Louie ever pledged, you know, been pledged in a group? You know, because all the shots they have to take. And, you know, they say yes. And then Joe says, okay, why don't you ask Bill? Because Bill hangs out with him. And Bill says he's a brother-in-law that, you know, he's a bro he's the brother-in-law Louie never had. And I'm kind of looking at Bill like, not Bill, sir. <laughs> and then he says to Joe, why not be nicer to Louie? And Joe says, you know, he welcomed him in with open arms. He just found out that his mother and sister-in-law aren't invited to the wedding, you know, um, so the men minus Bill collectively are taken aback. And they says, it's family. So that leads me to believe this is a cultural thing. So Bill isn't going to get it. And that's why I said I can appreciate Tiki not being there because I don't think that he would have got it. Because when you're dealing with coaches and whatnot, it's kind of best just kind of like <laughs> stay the hell out of it. <laughs> so um, Joe says he just wants Louie to know he's a piece of, you know, sugar, honey, I see and garbage. Show thereafter, Louie walks in. Joe and Louie shake hands and hug. And my thing is, that's fake on both of y'all. I'm just like, and my, here's the thing. A handshake, I get. A hug, that's a little too personal. But again, y'all know I'm jaded. So they ask about the bachelor party. And Louie says, well, the women should go out. The men should go out. And then we should meet at the end. 
I looked at him like, say what, sir? And everybody's like, no, no, that ain't going to fly. So Joe uh, Gorga inquires who will be invited to the bachelor party. Now, this right here was one of those things where it's a genuine question, but you're being passive aggressive. And Louis asks him, why are you asking? Now, this is being, you know, like he's being antagonistic right back, which I'm just like, ugh. Not going to go anywhere. And Joe asked about the wedding. And if, you know, he's inviting people that are close. And he was like, yes. He was like, so is Melissa's family not close to y'all? And he's like, yes. Yeah. So Joe says it's effed up that anyone attending is it anyone that is close. So I'm sorry. So anyone that is close to me isn't going to be in attendance. Now, this right here, I put in my notes that Joe is putting up a smoke screen. And I've only said I've, I've said this one, but. Typically, when you're dealing with people with issues, like, it's almost like a fire, you know, truck approaching a fire. The first thing you'll see is the smoke. And t and like I said, all that the smoke dictates is there is a fire. And what happens is, you know, they go in, okay, we found the smoke, here's the fire. And the, where they find the fire it might be where it spread. So now I got to find out where the fire started from. And then once they find where the fire started from, they figure out what the source of the fire is. And based off what the source of the fire is, they know how best to put out the fire. But typically when you go and edit with somebody, they tend to hit you with the smoke screen, which that is not the problem, which is what Joe is doing, which I didn't like. And I get, I understand why people do it, but it's just like, if you're trying to have some resolution, just have it. But then also over drinks that he had already had several shots like this might not be good. So Frank asked Louis, is there a reason, you know, that the in-laws aren't invited? And Louis says... It's it's a lot of um you know past BS, and Joe says no matter what happens between Teresa and Melissa, you have to give my in laws respect because of how they treated my parents. No, he doesn't, because here's the reality: because they even acknowledge the fact that Louis hasn't been in the picture that long, but he wasn't there when your parents were still living, so he doesn't know unless he watched the show and even still we don't have a whole lot of footage. He doesn't know that relationship. And this is also one of those things I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't believe that Louie is in her ear. But ultimately, the decision lands with Teresa. And Joe Benino says, as Italians, it's a slap in the face. That's why I say, I, once he said that, I'm like, okay, I know what it is. I really can't speak on it. And Louie says, there's a lot of slaps in the face going on. You're not the only one talking to Joe. Your wife went on social media this week saying the kids wouldn't eat if it wasn't for me. And I put in my notes, let's start at the beginning, because now Louis is putting up a smoke screen where it's, again, this is a problem. It's not the problem. It's not the source, the catalyst for all of this. Joe said um, what we meant is we were there, not saying they wouldn't eat, whatever. Louis replies that, the girls don't rec the girls recount it differently and joe tells him he doesn't know anything and just be quiet now right there it's just like okay now you overstepping your bounds and i think that's him talking more or less from a show perspective and feeling himself and he says you should be embarrassed to bring that up at this point it's all on the table now you know and louis says why you're on a podcast talking about your sister but again that's not the issue but okay and Joe G says, don't do that. And Louis replies that he will say whatever he wants to say about him. And again, it's all this energy and whatnot. And Joe uh, Gorga says, you know, tough guy, F you. Don't talk to me like that. And Louis has this cocky grin on his face where this is the reaction that he wanted out of Joe. And my thing is... Louis is a manipulator. He knows what he's doing. But if you know that you have vocabulary and the mental stability and you going through enough, you even though you know this man is drunk and the end result, we kind of got somewhere. He could have approached this thing with Joe in a different way and they didn't have to go through all of this. So you are feeding off of this like I wouldn't want nothing to do <laughs> with Louis. I'm not even lying to you. So Joe calls Louis a kitty cat. If y'all know the beat, the Beyonce song, you know, let's go look kitty cat. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm trying to be. Mm. And Bill says, you know, we're not insulting manhood. And I appreciate that. But it's like, you must really be friends with Louis. 
And Louis tells uh, Joe Gorga that he is so much above him, it isn't funny. You can talk all you want, and it's all this vibrato, and it's like you are trying to get under this man's skin, and you're doing a good job of it. And Joe Gorga pops off and says he will buzz his balls all night. No, he says right effing now. Louis tells Joe, stop with the theatrics, which they're all theatrics, but you're doing them too. And he says, if my fiance at 50 doesn't want, you know, so-and-so at the wedding, what am I to do? And Joe Gorga says, as a man, you tell her, you tell my sister you are out of line. And I hate when people do, again, that whole, like, as a man, as a woman, as of this, as of that. And Louis says the burden shouldn't fall on him. And that is one thing I do agree with. And Joe says he's hurt. And right here, when Joe said it with the most sincerity, we didn't went from the smoke. Now we didn't found the fire. We haven't found the source yet. Because we, for those of y'all who've been watching, you kind of know what it is. But we found the fire. He says, I'm hurt. Louis says, your sister's hurt too. Y'all should sit down and talk. And Joe doesn't feel comfortable because he doesn't want to be hurt again. And this is real. He doesn't want to open that cavity up for it to, you know, for all the other stuff to be put back in there. And Nate says, you know, he sees this with his family, talking about his wife. And pretty much is saying, y'all have to talk to put it out there. The, I'll, give me one second. And Louis says, your sister should hear how you feel because it's justified. You should hear her and end it. Joe, go think about it. What I don't like is y'all want this to happen and there's no plan of attack. There's not a mediator and there's not a common end goal because you say just talk about it and end it. This is years worth of stuff because the main thing he should be saying is <clears throat> you need to be in individual counseling. She needs to be in, in individual counseling and so does the girls. Then y'all need to come together and be in families counseling. But we'll see. And he will have to coach her next week. But that's all I got. I didn't talk too long. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to see y'all for some. Bye.